There are so many things I don't get about WWE today. So, 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 so many. So many of them. But one thing that really, really bothers me and troubles me when it comes to the company and Vince McMahon's philosophy specifically is when they bring in guys, or in certain cases, bring back guys that have a name, have a pedigree, have history, have a following, were previously over with the core audience, and then they don't utilize them. I've never understood that. Now, if you're looking at it from a standpoint of you want to make sure that you get all the toys and that way nobody else does, I guess. Kind of childish, kind of petty. Uh, petty level Vince, if you will. And I guess that would make sense he would do that. But to me, I kind of look at it slightly differently is if you're going to pay these guys, and in some cases when you bring back guys with name, with pedigree, you're going to pay them a lot of money, you would think you would want to not just do it for petty reasons or we've got to have this toy again or it's mine, mine, mine. You would think, you would think that you would look at it and say, hey, we're investing that much money in a guy. Let's go ahead and get the most that we possibly can. Let's get the biggest possible return imaginable. But Vince doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. It's just really bizarre and really weird. I saw it a couple years ago when he brought back the Dudley boys. And it's like, okay, you're going to do something with the Dudleys. And then they really didn't. Like, how do you bring in the Dudleys, one of the most legendary tag teams in wrestling history, and find a way to totally screw up anything and everything that you do with them. You bring back RVD, and then you never really have anything for him. Now, I'm not a huge RVD advocate, but at the same point in time, there are enough fans that enjoy RVD. Why would you not want to sit there and figure out a way to utilize him? And similar thing for a while with Rey Mysterio. Like, you've got Rey, don't just bring him in to job out. Don't just bring him in as another guy. Feature him as somebody that matters because he's a star and he's a big star, especially in comparison to most of the rest of your damn roster. I don't get it. And I can say the same thing about Matt Hardy. Like, I don't get it. A couple of years ago, all the buzz about whether or not the Hardys were going to make their return to WWE, lo and behold, you get to WrestleMania and they make their appearance, they win the tag titles, the place is bananas. One of the biggest reactions, and this is not hyperbole to say this, one of the biggest reactions at WrestleMania that I and many others have ever heard. It was monstrous. It was a moment. And you're saying after all these years being gone, they're back in the fold. Matt and Jeff are back home. And so many things felt right with the world again. For a lot of people that are a little bit younger than me, they're like, I'm reliving my childhood and pre-teen years. Oh, boy. And there's something there to be said about nostalgia and familiarity and comfort level and those types of things. And for a company like WWE that proactively goes out of its way to not build new stars, you would think, you would think, you would think that when they've got an act, when they've got talent, that has previously shown an ability to get over to at least a certain level, has a certain amount of star power and name and face recognition behind them, that you would want to bring them in and utilize them and make the most out of them. And yet again, the WWE found a way to do little to nothing with Matt and Jeff Hardy. Sure, a mid-card title run here and there. Sure, you've got Matt doing a program with Bray Wyatt. And you would have thought at that point in time that all the delete stuff and Woken Matt Hardy, Broken Matt Hardy, whatever the hell you want to call him, you would have thought that Vince, after initially going with it and seeming reportedly to like it, that he would have continued to go with it. And I don't care about injuries, I don't care about anything else. But then eventually, just as so often the case, he just loses interest. It was like Steinbrenner in his later years for the Yankees. He would sign a Hideki Matsui, a Jose Contreras, throw all this huge money at these guys. And it was trophies. It was toys. It wasn't doing anything to help his team win World Series. 
That's what it feels like here with Vince. Kind of that Steinbrenner mentality of, I've got to have it, I've got to have it, now I've got it, and I don't really want to play with it anymore. Like a six-year-old child. And look, I'm not saying Matt Hardy is a massive, huge single star. He is not. I'm not also here to say that he's no draw at all, because that is not true. Depending on the situation and the circumstance and the company involved, impacts just how much of a draw Matt Hardy is. On the independent scene with an ROH, somebody like that, Matt Hardy can draw you some money relative to what you normally draw. So you certainly want to have a guy like him in the fold. You go to TNA and you go with what he was doing there, while the internet loved it, the reality is, is it didn't move the needle that much. It didn't. And if anything, you could say, while certainly not on the level of aces and eights, that ultimately it did more damage to the product in that company long term than it did any good. But nonetheless, at least the same level of people were watching as they had been before. But you take this act that is over with the hardcore fans that is the type of fan base that WWE is appealing to more and more. And they bring them in, bring back the tag team act, and then they eventually go with the single stuff with Matt Hardy, but then they really don't. And I just don't get it. And now we've gotten to the point where work or not, does it really matter? Matt Hardy, they've wished him the best in his future endeavors, talking about contracts expiring. And you've got people probably wondering, because it's wrestling and you never know what to believe or what not to believe, is this a shoot? Is this a work? Is he actually leaving? Or are they just pulling our leg? And the reality is it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Because even if this was a work, what is it going to lead to? Nothing of any significance or any impact or any meaning. And if he doesn't come back, and he goes somewhere else, like in AEW, you know, how much are they really going to go with him? And how much is he really going to move the needle there as a singles guy? Not much. It's just frustrating to me because I look at this and I see this is yet another situation where you see a Goldberg on the one hand, they pick and choose their spots when they do something with him, but when they do, they care. Vince cares tremendously. He cares, ironically enough, a lot more now about a Goldberg in 2019, now 2020, than he did about a Bill Goldberg in 2003 and 2004. Defies all logic to me, I know. And you could say, well, he had his uh, World Heavyweight Championship run. Trust and believe, when you look at how Goldberg is featured now, compared to a decade and a half ago plus, it is clear to see that Vince is more interested, gets it more, cares a lot more about Goldberg and Goldberg's character and presenting him well than he did at that time. But you look here and you say, you don't use Matt Hardy on commentary, manager, another tag team, singles, like you just don't use him at all? Like not only is that a bad investment and in getting a poor return on the investment, that just doesn't make any sense. Like, at least if you're going to have the guy, if you want to job him out by putting him in some programs to try and elevate guys, at least that could make some sense. You're saying, I don't see a ton of value in Matt Hardy long-term as a commodity, but I do see immediate short-term value of him as a commodity helping to build my next generation of talent. And you can't even do that. More importantly, you won't even do that. Why? Like, what is the big deal here? What is the problem with figuring out that if you're going to pay these guys a lot of money, you damn sure might as well use them a little bit. And this is not a thing about wanting to use them and not letting them go to AEW or anywhere else. Just use them for your own purposes. Like, you should be playing the infinite game here. You're not playing a finite game like you did in the 90s, where the whole thing was trying to put WCW out of business, even though you said that wasn't bold. That is exactly the whole thing. And part of the problem was, was once WCW eventually went out of business because you bought them, now your whole 
business model for the past half decade went away and he didn't know where to go from there and frankly the WWE has never fully recovered. Here you should be playing the infinite game of I'm not competing against anybody, I'm trying to be the best that I possibly can be and I want to take this guy that I'm paying a lot of money to while his brothers on the shelf are not involved and I want to get the most out of him. I want to get a maximum ROI. And, that, and that's what I don't get about things. You know, whatever Matt Hardy does next, best to him, good luck to him. It's just a shame that the WWE, and specifically Vince McMahon, didn't care enough and weren't aware enough to do a better job of utilizing a guy that, even in a singles role, could have at least brought you a lot more value than you actually got from him.